Congressman Tim Burchett is joining us. Congressman, uh, thank you very much for joining us here on Nashville's Morning News, especially at the last minute. A um, couple of things. Inquiring minds want to know, how did you do at the plate last night in the congressional baseball game? Well, I walked. You <laughs> they walked? Don't none of me. All right. They don't want none of me. You know, was- they intentionally walked you? Is that what it is, Congressman? I'm pretty much sure that was it. Um, you know, they can smell my credentials. from. from uh, you know. They know you're a street fighter. Yeah. You know, it's funny. At the beginning of the game, they had a bunch of these protesters. And somebody, and I, I said, that wouldn't happen in Tennessee. And they said, really? Why not? And I said, because <clears throat> about 100,000 screaming rednecks would have beat their ass. <laughs> um, you know, they, <laughs> they jumped out on the field and... and and this big old burly Capitol policeman said to me, he goes, Tim, he goes, this is one time I wish I didn't have a gun. I wish I had a bat. You know, oh. because he, it was, <laughs> so, yeah, it was a, um, and then they started screaming during the national an- anthem, you know, free Palestine. Oh, oh, man. Are you please. serious? Come on. I thought, I thought, how lame is that? You're not going to win anybody over. Even the Democrats were mad. And, um, you know. Well, so the night, the night didn't get much. Uh, the night didn't get much better for them because they lost like thirty-one to eleven. You guys just speaking of kicking their butt. I mean, you guys I did. Was a, as they used to say in the pro wrestling world of Ron and Don Wright, I said it was a Tennessee dog whooping. Yes, sir. That's, That's exactly right. All right, very quickly. So you're going to uh, meet with Donald Trump today, and uh, yeah, you and an hour. and other lawmakers and so forth. So. You guys have so much to talk about. I mean, you've got illegal immigration to talk about, among uh, many other things. You've got Ukraine to talk about as well. Um, I'm curious because I'm I'm fascinated by this stuff. So is there like a big room or something that you guys meet in? Like, is it at a hotel? Yeah, we'll meet over what's called the Capitol. We'll meet over at the Capitol Hill Club and they'll because that's where they can have tight security. Got Um, it. They can. And I've been in them and, and over here at the Capitol and they'll bring the president, vice president in, but, but Trump is a target obviously by the left and <clears throat> every crazy protester in the world will be out there. So, and it's, they're tight. It's, it's already pretty tight around here today. You can always tell when the, um, they've got the guy out on the corner with the AR. And that's usually lets you know that there's something going on. And, you know, and I've had these crazy death threats this, um, I'm on this Ukraine list. So, oh, are you really? You know, no, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm on that. And so I was. Um, well, it's not surprising. I mean, you know, you no. you have uh, you know been very vocal against it. So so let me just throw down some questions for you real quick. Sure. Uh, number one, Biden's um, executive order on immigration. Of course, it turns out that you know basically there's so many loopholes in there that anybody can come in and it's, it's catch and release. It, it, yeah. It fell flat. The Democrats are even running from it. There's nothing, nothing in there. Just another layer of bureaucracies. It's just a. I guess if you're an immigration lawyer, you probably like it because it. You're going to have to go through them another step, and and you know the, the catch and release. And yes, we just heard yesterday that there was a a terrorist cell in the country, and we're not really sure where they're at, and and how many are in here, and it's just. You know, it, it's just constant. It's constant with this bunch. They're anarchists, and he's you've got a dawdling old man in the White House who can't find the soft serve ice cream machine. So when it, let's say that Donald Trump does win the White House, how do we take care of all of the problems that Joe Biden is going to leave behind? I mean, we we're going to have, you know, millions of illegal aliens in this country. Sure. We have no how do we get them out? How is there a way to rectify what Joe Biden has wrecked? Probably not. The um, I, I, what's going to have to happen? It's going to be it, it, people going to want it to happen overnight, and it won't. But you're going to have Chamber of Commerce, the National Chamber of Commerce, will be fighting us every step of the way, and these weak Republicans and Democrats will um, will side with the left and. They'll hope that this issue kind of fades away, which uh, they all seem to do until something bad happens, and then we get fired up again. There's talk that they'll have a some sort of transit system. I would I would say it'd be a good time to buy bus stock because that would be busing companies would be the ones that have to do it, and um, and I suspect 
the way I've understood it, they'll just start transporting them over the border. But you got to have a you got to have the wall. And, and the one thing I'm worried about is the spending. We will go into a massive spending to undo yeah. their massive spending, and I think that's the wrong approach. I think we can handle it within the system pretty easily if we would just ease along and not just knee jerk the whole thing. I think there's a process we can do. And rounding up people is a the first time you separate a mom from her from their kid, you know, that's gonna be six o'clock news and yeah. people are gonna start screaming saying, No, stop, this is not what we meant. This guy's a neighbor of mine, you know, his kids go to my kid's school and so on and so forth. So I think it, it we need a plan. We need a serious plan and not just something that just just like I said, not not a knee jerk type reaction. Congressman, you were talking about the cost of deporting all of these illegal aliens. It's it's not only, as you know, it's not only about deporting them, but it's also about finding them. I mean, it's almost yeah. like the, we are going to be dealing with the problem because Republicans will want to deal with it as opposed to what the um, Democrats are doing, which is creating the problem. But I just I, you, you bring up a point that I've been making for a long time, which is. It's great to say we need to deport everybody, but number one, how do you find them? Number two, how do you actually get them out of our country? And then there is the the fallout, if you will, as you just said. You're talking about separating a mother and a child and so forth. And so is that the kind of thing that is being discussed right now by Republicans on Capitol Hill? They are, but, you know, as my former landlord in Nashville, Brian Mabry, and I've discussed it's it's really a, a situation like you've got a you've got a boat that's leaking water and you can bail or you can plug the hole first. And I submit that you should plug the hole first. I think we should con- concentrate on the wall. And then when they get a, a picked up for criminal activity, then you start deporting them. Because if you deport them now, this, you know, it's just going to be a revolving door. They're right. just going to figure out another way to get back. So build the wall first, then start with the, um, um, the, the deportation. And you start with the criminals, of course, and you got to make sure that there's something in Mexico if they commit a crime. You know, if they commit murder or something, oh, deport them. Well, that's no crime. They're going to go back to their their families and life of crime back in Mexico or wherever they come from with the cartel. So I, you, you have to have some degree of who you're going to imprison and who you're not. So I would hope that we would, um, um, we would not just knee jerk it, like I said, and because it won't, we'll just spend a lot of money and then it'll be completely undone. And, and I don't think you can, I mean, there's no way to knee jerk it. I mean, you just, you, you have to figure out the plan and then you have to yeah. execute the plan. I think that there's a lot of folks out there that when you talk about knee jerking, you're right. It's real easy to say deport them all. But, OK, how do you possibly do that? Yeah, I mean, and, you're talking billions of dollars with yeah. I mean, you've got we know 14 million have come over in this last in the last three years that we know of. And then, you know, you've got the terrorists, you've got the, the communist Chinese. Yep. Who I keep saying when China rolls on Taiwan, they're not going to be down at the Marine Corps recruiting station signing up to fight for America, and um, we got to figure out what they're going to do, and and it's going to be it's going to be tough. People are going to have to suck it up because it's going to look bad in the press, and people are going to you know because the press is not on our side. Yeah, no. I mean y'all are, but you know what I mean. The national media, they're anarchists. They have so much invested in Joe Biden that they have they cannot let this let this slide at all. Um, they're still touting him. I mean, you know, the the left's um, moral compass is the TV show The View, um, and, and so that's kind of what they follow. Well, let, let's not, uh, Congressman. I I may have to respectfully correct you. What about Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski? I mean, come on. You know what? I don't. I I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't recognize their voices if they were to call in on the radio right now. I do not let them fill up any spot in my brain. In the gym, they they have them sometimes when the Democrats get to the workout area early. They'll have them on first. And honestly, I don't. You know, Scarborough, you know, he was. Um, he was a Republican. He ran in Matt, yeah, he was in Matt Gates' district of all things, I believe. Um, so, anyway, I just don't have. 
Yeah, I don't pay them any attention. That's got to that, that, be fun in the workout room, you know, working out next to a guy like Dan Goldman. I see him every day. I saw him last night at the ball game. Um, yeah, he whiffed. Uh, Did you know that his, his strikeout uh, against Stubby, uh, that he, he that has gone viral? No, I wouldn't doubt it, but you know what? He, he probably tripped over one of his bales of $100 bills. You know, he's the heir to the Levi's fortune. Yeah. And so, you know, he doesn't, he ain't missing any meals. These guys <laughs> up here. I, my banker called me one day and said, Tim, he said, he said, you are the most honest person in Congress. And I said, well, thank you, brother. And he said, hey, brother. And he also said, you are the poorest member from Tennessee. <laughs> and I said, I know that. <laughs> Listen, you know, you're, I mean, you're, I think he's got worth hundreds of millions of dollars, and I just shake my head. Listen, you're a man of honor, and we appreciate you coming on with us at the very last minute. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, real quickly, I, I we, we kind of sort of touched on this, but you, Donald Trump, other Republicans, what's the conversation going to be about? Just give me a tick list of what's what is going well, to be discussed. It, it's Trump. I mean, it could go an hour and a half or longer, but it, I think what he – I hope what he talks about, we've already talked about, you know, that Americans are paying $600 more a month to, yeah. just to survive um, the border, the fentanyl, um, the terrible military situation we're in right now, just the morale and the, the, all the crazy woke policies that are destroying the foundation of this country. I hope he talks about how we're going to fix all those things. Yep. So yep. there's a lot to what, fix. That's what my thought is. All right. Thank you very much for joining us, Congressman Tim Burchett, on the Newsmaker Hotline at the very last minute. So, again, thank you very much for that. It is 722.